with an interesting development, Inquisitor. A petition from citizens of Arroyo. They wish to know what Andraste said to you in the Fane. They think she spoke to me. Even Leliana can't trace the rumor's origin. It may be expedient to respond to those asking for Andraste's words. It's not Andraste who saved me. Few people outside Skyhold know it was Divine Justinia who delivered you from the Fade. You could attempt to tell Varroyo citizens the truth, though it may not be as inspiring as they hope. Tell them the Inquisition's position is that the Divine saved me from the Fade, not Andraste. Very well. Some of the devout will be discouraged, but it will placate the Chantry. Yes? How do you stay so civil with everyone, Josephine? Bonds of circumstance among the nobility are fickle. Civility is the only constant everyone admires. And I do deplore rudeness in those who know better. Does it even become a strain sometimes? Well, it can be trying. There is no shortage of self-regard among the nobility. The game can be wearying, discouraging, and extremely baneful. But honestly, I'd miss meeting people. I've made the most fascinating friends. One good thing about becoming Inquisitor has been meeting so many different people. I'm pleased. I imagine we appear a strange bunch to those outside our circle. Mages, Templars, Seekers, and an apostate elf are not often found working in harmony. Or at all. I wanted to spend some time with just you and me, Josephine. Why, that sounds lovely. I imagine your forces will be heading into the Arbor Wilds very soon, Inquisitor. Trust me when I say that wherever the Alluvian is hidden, it is worth any effort to prevent Corypheus from acquiring it. I'd like to know more about you. If you have questions, then ask. I'll leave you to the garden. Until next time, then. Wandering the gardens, I see. You seem to know a great deal about Elven law. The Dalish are not the only ones interested in the distant past, Inquisitor. Indeed, my skills allow me access to places the Dalish dare not even dream of. The ancient elves hold secrets they have not yet given up. Secrets about the foundation of Thedas itself. Thus, they are my focus. Corypheus clearly feels the same. I'll leave you to the garden. As you like. Adamant's influence continues, your worship. I submit Lord Livius Erimond of Virantium, who remains loyal to Corypheus. We found him alive, offering extreme resistance, likely because the Order will ask for his head. In more colorful terms. To say nothing of justice you might personally require for what was suffered in the Fade. Countless better men and women than you are dead. Why shouldn't this be quick? I recognize none of this proceeding. You have no authority to judge me. On the contrary, many officials have communicated that they will defer to the Inquisitor on this matter. Because they fear, not just Corypheus, but Tevinter, rightful ruler of every piece of ground you trod in your pathetic life. I serve the living God. Bring down your blades and free me from the physical. Glory awaits me.
Although willing, there is a group you have wronged more than any. Lord Livius Erimon de Varantium. The Wardens can have you. Let them take your head, if they want it. Their petty justice or yours, it matters not. Truth lies in the next world. Another of the lingering pains of Adamant, your worship. Sir Ruth is a senior warden of the Order. She was one of the many who slit the throat of another to bind a demon. She does not contest this. In fact, she surrendered to us. She requests no mercy. She wants the public justice of the Headman's Axe. You're very serious about this. Is more death the answer? There is no excuse for my actions. I murdered another of the Order. That blood marks me more than the Blight ever could. Accepting their actions while thralls of Corypheus, many treaties allow wardens any extreme if it opposes the Blight. I can't do it. I can't use the greater good to justify my crimes. As if it would create a future I could be a part of. It is wrong that this broke me. I've done worse with full sanction. I can do nothing except be an example of the cost. The Inquisition stands for faith. Our work has greater purpose. Sometimes we need a reminder. Sir Ruth, the Herald of Andraste forgives you in her name. Find peace in that. Your worship, I... I will try. I knew Stroud, you know, not well. He saved Hawk's little brother from the Blight. Not many people knew who he was, but the man was a hero when it mattered. He wasn't the first good man to fall to Corypheus. He won't be the last. This story's no good for heroes. You must be glad that Hawk made it back in one piece. Yeah. Closest thing I've ever seen to a miracle there. Oh, Hawk asked me to tell everyone back in Kirkwall where he's going. Baker's breath, Isabella's going to be furious. I'd better write some letters. Excuse me. Sorry, I really need to write some letters. Another time, all right? The new power you wield. I heard from Cassandra that it is the magic of the Night Enchanters. If I am not mistaken, the techniques descend from those of ancient elven mages, called Arcane Warriors. I wonder what they would think to see their magic used in defense of the Chantry. I doubt they were called Arcane Warriors in Elven. The formal name for the techniques you have learned was the Durthena and Nasalim, knowledge that led to victory. Mages who eschewed physical confrontation Called it Gilanim Banalwen, the path that leads astray. What can you tell me about the Arcane Warriors? They were elite guardsmen, serving as bodyguards or champions for nobles, as I understand. Mages who focused on spirits or the Fade might sneer at their physicality, but never doubted their honor. They were the living embodiment of will made manifest, mind shaping the body into the perfect weapon. I hope the ancient elven warriors would be pleased to see their techniques survive. 
I hope so as well. So much knowledge has been lost. Perhaps having something they created carried forward, even in such a different form, would gratify them. Did you need anything else? I'd be interested in hearing your opinions on elven culture. Perhaps you could ask Sarah. She has... opinions. You don't much care for Sarah, do you? I pity her. Although I imagine she would detest that. Perhaps in truth, I envy her. She has a purity of purpose that I lack. I have observed too much and done too little. What do you wish to know? I'd like to know more about the elves from before our time. The Dalish strive to remember Halam Shiral. But Halam Shiral was merely a fumbling attempt to recreate a forgotten land. Arlathan. Elvanan was the empire, and Arlathan its greatest city. Place of magic and beauty, lost to time. You've studied ancient elves. What else do you know of Arlathan? We hear stories of them living in trees, and imagine wooden ramps or Dalish arabels. Imagine instead spires of crystal twining through the branches, palaces floating among the clouds. Imagine beings who lived forever, for whom magic was as natural as breathing. That is what was lost. I'd like to know more about the Dalish elves. It is a mistake to think of the Dalish as a single group. They have lived as separate clans for centuries now. As a consequence, each clan has learned, interpreted, and forgotten different parts of elven history. Some trade freely with humans, or adopt city elves who flee the alienages. Others attack humans on sight. What can you tell me about elves living in human cities? The culture in alienages or among the slaves of Tevinter is like any of the impoverished and powerless. They cling to memories of a better past, and practice a few rituals to distinguish themselves from humans. I've heard tales that Dalish magic is different from the magic I learned in the Circle. No, and yes. Magic is magic, just as water is water, but it can be used in different ways. Dalish magic is more practical, not needing Chantry approval, although they still frown on blood magic. Superstition. Much of it is more subtle. A legacy from when elves were immortal. You said that the censure against blood magic was a superstition. I did. It's fortunate Cassandra is not within earshot. Most modern cultures forbid blood magic. Publicly, even Devinda disapproves of it. But as I said, magic is magic. It matters only in how it is used. To be honest, I don't see it as different from any other magic. It's a means to an end. Indeed. The problem is that under the Chantry, blood magic is forbidden, so only criminals practice it. While in Devinda, magisters compete with each other instead of keeping their volatile friends in check. They always succeed through power. So they have never had the chance to learn another way. Legends of elven immortality. Did they use magic to increase their lifespan? No. It was simply part of being elven. The subtle beauty of their magic was the effect, not the cause of their nature. Some spells took years to cast. Echoes would linger for centuries, harmonizing with new magic in an unending symphony. It must have been beautiful. We'll talk later. Goodbye. How can I help? I'd like to hear more about what you saw in your exploration of the Fade. I would be happy to share it with you. Tell me about the old ruins you explored. I found an ancient dwarven tig no longer sheltered by the stone. An earthquake had exposed it all to daylight. A thousand dwarven corpses lay. The victims of a darkspawn horde. Their last stand marked by one great ring of armor. In the middle, one small body, clutching tightly to a small stuffed toy. Tell me about a spirit you encountered. The Alamari crossed the Frostback Mountains to escape a beast they called the Shadow Goddess in their stories. I met the spirit that they fled. She walked the Fade along the southern tundra, weeping lonely and forgotten. Great for Elden formed because a lonely spirit drove her prey away. Tell me about the old memories you found in the Fade. I saw a dwarf emerge into the light of day and shield his eyes against the sun. 